So we're going to start off um, by looking at effective resume writing. And you know, when we look at what makes a high impact resume, we've established uh, criteria that we're going to walk through. Okay, um, but before we get to the criteria. Uh, I just want to preface this by saying that this tutorial is going to focus on a lot of really small details. And you may say, oh please, you know, I, some of it may seem really almost petty to you that we're going to focus on really little things. But the truth of the matter is, all of those little details add up to the sum impression, okay? And the first impact that your resume has when a new reader sees it is the visual impact. High impact is twofold. It's visual and it's content. But visual is what happens first. So we're going to pay a lot of attention to getting that visual impact just perfect. Okay? And the reason that we need to be concerned about this <laughs> is driven by what I consider to be very compelling statistics especially today. <laughs> so, when an organization or an institution posts a professional level job, how many responses are they getting nowadays? Guesses are free. Take a guess. Millions. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what it feels like, I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Melissa, yeah, here, here's some actual information right from the field, 50 to 75. All right, it's averaging somewhere between 50 and several hundred. It depends on the job, the organization, and the locale. So if this is an organization and a place that people will kill or die to get a job there, we're going to have several hundred. If it's a more rural um, place, uh, and a, a job that maybe is in a medium salary range, then we're probably going to be on the other side of 100. So it averages out about 125. It's a stack, stands about that high. Now make no mistake, even though today we are responding primarily electronically, those resumes and letters still get printed, okay? Because nobody reviews them on a, on a screen. It's really uncomfortable, and we usually have to pass these resumes and letters around to other people in a department, okay? So they're printed out. It's this big stack. Now, one person's immediate job is to screen that pile and reduce it to a workable number. So what percent are they screening out in that first review? Yes? 80, 90. 80, 90. The 90. The 90 will be the correct answer. They're screening 90% out in the first review. How much time are they spending on any one letter resume combination in that first review? That'll be in your dreams, Deshaies. <laughs> Anyone else? Seconds. Seconds? Got a number on that, Greg? Uh, 30 seconds. 10 and 15. Uh, he's not a plant, I'm going to tell you right away, Greg, <laughs> Greg, Greg is not a plant. Uh, 10 to 15 seconds. So I want you to think about that, okay? A 10 to 15 second review of letter and resume, and they're throwing away 9 out of every 10, okay? So here's the reality with that. If a resume has a homemade look, looks out of style, like old fashioned, has any errors at all, that's it. It's gone. So from that point, folks, this visual impact is critical, okay? So we need to ensure that when our resume is being reviewed, it looks so sharp, so clear, so professional, I like to say that the impact is so strong, this resume all but gets up and sings. Right? <laughs> it is just great. And that reader takes that few
few critical seconds longer and passes us into that very important 10% for serious consideration pile. Okay, and that's our goal. We need to consistently get to that 10% pile. Okay? So we're going to start with our criteria for high impact resume. Now this term high impact, it says what it means, it means what it says. It means that the document has such a great impact that again the reader stops that critical few seconds longer and spends quality time reviewing that. Okay? So we're going to look at what goes into um, that uh, criteria. How do we reach that standard? All right? We're going to start here. Uh, in terms of establishing this criteria. First off, we want to make sure that the resume is communicating content-wise expectation for future performance. So have you created this content in a strong manner, clear manner, and a convincing manner so that the reader reads it and makes that leap and realizes this person will be a real asset based on past performance and current skills and credentials. Okay? So, is what you've done in the past likely to reoccur? Okay? The key thing for uh, resumes is to understand that the primary function of a resume is that it's a marketing doc. That's its reason for being. Okay? It's designed to market you. We can actually see ourselves, and many of us won't be happy about this, but we can see ourselves as a product. Okay? This markets the product. And if you don't learn to do that effectively, you're going to just have endless struggles in, in trying to secure a, a good job. Okay? Because that's pretty much what it's about. So it's a marketing doc, we need to make sure that we are marketing, okay? So we need to make sure that we're doing this effectively, it's focusing on strengths. Now, this is a, a reason why many people pay other people hundreds of dollars to write their resume, okay? Because this doc really needs to be employer-centered and not self-centered. But it's a document about you. So it's pretty hard to write a document about you and not have this be self-centered. Okay? It's your life on paper. So we need to remember constantly who's the audience and what are we trying to portray. Our chief content impact consideration is is the document well organized? Is the information clear and easy to grasp? And we have what we call the fundamental <coughs> question for the writer. What goes on the resume and what does not go is driven by this question here. Does this item represent high value, high interest to the reader? Okay? And this is the tough part if you're writing it yourself. Because for you, all experience had meaning, okay? It's all a part of your life, and it's hard to make those decisions of what represents the highest value and interest to the reader, okay? So that's our driving question for content. 